Welcome back, everyone, to Nathan's Mailbag. This is the segment where we get the community questions come in. Curtis and I do answer these questions to the best of our ability. If you want to write in, broken by concept show at gmail.com. The mailbag's always piling up, but you know, sometimes we're gonna get a bit of a drier spell, so we might be started approaching there a little bit. We've been powering through the questions now that we have a dedicated uh, video to it. So send them in. We'll happily respond. And again, if you sent it in ages ago, it's probably long lost. Sometimes you've got to bump it up. Bump it up again. Yep. Even if you just reply to that email saying bump. Yep. All right. First question here is from Virtuoso. Title of this email is BBC inspired me to come back to league after previously helping me realize I was addicted. We've obviously explored addiction quite yep. a bit on this podcast. Yep. Hey, Curtis and Nathan, I'm Austin, also known as Livingston. Oh, right. And have a long break. Uh, after a long break, I've come back to league. I was a previous member of the MLA yep. and I loved my time there. After my time, however, I realized I had an unhealthy relationship with the game and was addicted to which Curtis talks about my story on an episode. To sum it up, I was very unhappy and heavily addicted using League as an unhealthy escape, which is an important distinction. Since my time away, I've made a lot of new friends and have a lot more I do with my free time besides play League and am generally happier. So why did I decide to come back? I always thought I was talented because I could always get to a good baseline of most things very quickly, but then I fall off a cliff and can't really improve. Same with League. Something you guys said on an episode inspired me to come back to league, which was when Curse talked about himself not being talented and having to just put in the work and not give in the respect to the game. And it resonated with me because I want to know what that's like. I usually give up on things after I hit that cliff and tell myself I can't get better or in the past I didn't want to put the, in the work to improve. I want to break that habit and league seems like a good way to do it. I have ADHD so things are hard sometimes, but I don't want that to hold me back anymore. I want to try to push through those difficulties and overcome adversity because I think it will make me an overall better, healthier person. What do you guys think? Is this a good way to do it by accomplishing my goals in league? Thanks and love the podcast. It's a tough question. It is a tough question, isn't it? Because obviously league wouldn't be the only thing that you could, no. you know, a big challenge that you set yourself. It could be like a running a marathon or. Yeah. And we don't really know. I mean, neither of us have ADHD and we don't know. I don't know what it would be like to interact in other areas or other skills or what other endeavors with ADHD. I don't know what would be good for it and not good for it. Um what we do know about ADHD is that they uh, tend to struggle with executive function and- Thinking long-term. Thinking long-term and um, jumping from thing to thing, getting distracted. And if you're not extremely excited or passionate about one thing, you kind of lose focus. Um, and sticking to a process and staying disciplined is something that's quite difficult, right? With, with, I think that's one of the things that we found in our research. Look, and experience. Yeah, in our experiences in the in our programs, yeah, I would say, look, I, 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 I'll be dead serious. I, I don't feel comfortable, kind of saying what he should do. Mm. You know, it's such a big decision for mm. him, and he seems like he's actually really happy with with where he's at right now. You know, I think at the end of the day, in my mind, if you feel as though league is something that genuinely gives you enjoyment, there's no harm in having a crack. Mm. You're not, you're not locked in. You're not locked into a 24-month contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to play. I make the decision and here we go. I, you know? I've stopped enjoying the game. I go back to the unhealthy relationship. Oh, no, I've decided it. Like, you know, when you're thinking, oh, all that time I lost, it's like well, that, we got to take risks yeah. in life, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're unsure, give it give it a shot. Give it a, a month or two, right? Mm -hmm. Give it a month or two. See, see how it fits in with your schedule. If you're genuinely feeling less happy – and it doesn't suit your lifestyle that the one the, the type of life that you want now then it's okay there's no need for it right it has to in some way shape or form fill a hole in your in your life right uh, fill a void and um, we don't know what that void is exactly only you know that so i think you need to be both curious and follow your follow your gut your gut will know if you're really honest with yourself and you actually reflect you'll know You'll know 
What do you think, Nathan? I think it's great that he's identified that um, his, you know, the whole talent thing and mm. then put in the work and he wants to sort of break down this barrier or this narrative yeah. that he has because yeah. uh, it, it's powerful for all aspects of life. Just knowing that if you put in effort, you improve at something, you get awesome results and you'd be like, wow, I achieved something. Well, okay, so there's, there's two parts here, right? I think in some way, shape or form, he has to tackle this, whether it's through league or another, another endeavor, right? If he does it through league... I feel like the learning on the back end would be massive. Or like, imagine that breakthrough. It's like, I've now gone back to something that I know actively I am not talented at. I mean, I've proven it to myself that I'm not talented at it. I've had a bad relationship with this thing in the past. And to overcome that and come out the other side. It's like a movie storyline, isn't it? Right, it's, a, it's an amazing, that's an amazing experience, right? That's something you could probably keep with you for the rest of your life. On the flip side though, the danger of that is that there is a lot of mental baggage that would be there lying, mm, it's, it's, waiting for it's you to lurking. grab you. It's, it's lurking. The, narrative, the, narrative, the old narratives and stuff. So it's kind of like in my eyes, it's it's a, it's a bit of a high risk, high reward it type is. thing. Whereas if you were to go to another endeavor and- Starting fresh. Starting for, you're, it's clean slate. There is no mental baggage. Like let's go in, I can send it. I don't have to think about what my relationship with this was in the past. And it's, it's clean slate. You can start brand new with a beautiful mindset. Ultimately, both have their ups and downs. It depends. Again, it depends on what you think is going to give you the most enjoyment. I still think the league thing would be interesting. And then again, don't lock yourself in though. Be willing to let go. Like enter in saying like, I'm going to really do, like maybe even have like, okay, I'm going to reflect every week. I'm going to do a, a session like uh, by myself on a weekend. Check in, to make check in check, with yourself. In, yeah. And maybe have some sort of like things that you write to yourself even before you started. Okay, if if the if I'm feeling these sorts of ways, or if I'm developing these habits, right, or, or, or showing these behaviors, then I got to stop. Like like write yourself a contract, like solo queue contract, before you even start it. I would say that's a better way to go about it. I like it. Yeah. I, I definitely, I mean, because it's it's weird because it's like his life's getting good. He's getting things together. Yeah. It's all good. It's like, it's like. Dragging back in. <laughs> get over here. <laughs> Scorpion, dude. Legit. All right. <laughs> Next email title. This is from Zach. Negative relationship with the game. Um, hello, Zach. Uh, after listening to a recent podcast, you talked about what it means to have a negative relationship with the game. I was hoping to give insight into my experiences with having a negative relationship with the game and how the BBC has helped remove them. I've always been a competitive person and consistently competed in soccer up until around college. I found league in season two and it started to become one of my biggest passions. At the time, the growth in esports made me fall victim to the classic could I be a pro player mindset. Back then it was pretty normal to invest as much of your time playing the game so that I was uh, so that it what so that it is what I started to believe was how the game should be played. You know, obviously we talked about it in the yep. last episode. Throw just spamming games, fifteen games a day. The Korean mindset. Yep. There was no other way. That's not right. So I started playing 10, 15 games per day. I even started to not sleep in order to get an extra few games in. Over time, this really started to affect my relationships outside of the game. I started to mix miss practices for soccer, which resulted in me not starting a game, which was the first time for me. My relationships with friends started to distance. All of this, all of this, just made me want to invest more time playing the game. My family relationships started to get worse, and they had no understanding of why I was playing the game. At one point, I even left my house for a few weeks. All of this just started to get me, which resulted in me underperforming in game. Eventually, I decided that I needed to quit the game. That's a really good decision that he came to because that's not healthy at all. In 2020, I started to have a lot of free time again, and I thought maybe I should play some league again. A friend of mine found this podcast and told me I should check it out. At the time, I was starting to play competitively again, so I was amazed that other people have a similar passion for the game. After listening for around a year, I started to follow the process. I started to see results that I didn't think were going to occur. I really started to enjoy the game, not just winning, but the idea of league playing blocks was something I didn't think could make such an impact. Just thinking about the process allowed me to have a positive insight with the game. Overall, I stopped blaming other people, dropped many false narratives I had. I have learned more from using Ender reviews than playing league for over eight years. I honestly believe this podcast can benefit people who do not play League of Legends 
And he just wants to say thank you, Curtis and Nathan, for allowing me to have a positive relationship with the game. I hope to continue my journey with staying with the process. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much. What was his name again? Zach. Thank you, Zach. I really, I mean, it means a lot that you write this, write this in. And that's what we do it for at the end of the day. That's right. Um, and that's what keeps us motivated to make this podcast. Right. Keep coming back. And we're um, three episodes a week now. Yeah. So great stuff, man. I mean, that's it. He's just encapsulated why we do the podcast to share that message. And Zach's an, ex this is an extreme that's case. An, His whole life was falling apart because of legal agents. terrible. And it's just great again to highlight, this is the reality. This is the reality for a lot of people. Guys, we have a small podcast here. There's the, right now, this is probably happening to thousands and thousands of kids. Mm, yeah, more. more. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands, probably. Maybe even more. <laughs> even more. Maybe hundreds of thousands. I don't know. Yeah, I don't How know. How many games are linked to you play a game? But you I would say that, you know what's scary is that this, Zach, he could have come back to league and rinse repeated. That's right. In a way. Like yep. he could have come back in 2020, mm. lockdown, mm. and just pissed away years again before he realized he's in a hole. Could have gone backwards again. That's how addictive the game is. Yeah, it's the right of made it's a very fantastic addictive. game. It's a fantastic game. Yeah. The ultimate uh, dopamine hits and yeah. uh, challenge. The other thing as well is um, it, it's sort of like one thing. It's like you could just sort of just read this like, oh, well, they found the you know Kurt podcast by Nathan and Curtis. Like how easy is that? Like, mm. guys, there's people in our programs that even struggle to follow the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. This guy's not even in our programs. Like He's had no it, one else it, to encourage him but himself. It essentially, takes, right? Yeah, that's hard work, man. Very hard. You know? Props to him. He must have a lot of discipline in that sense. And he said he was watching for a year, so I don't know when he started it, but yeah. maybe it took him a year to finally catch on. What I've noticed as well- it Takes from, time. Yeah, from the stories that I've heard people, um, both in, in the MLA, it, a lot of the time it takes months to really internalize it. Yes. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes some people just don't get it. Either. Yeah, that's right. That's, and that's absolutely. what I think that's what we've had to come to terms with, Nathan, is that this podcast is just not for everyone. This no. is a, a small podcast. It's a niche podcast. That's it's, right. Our content is niche. Our program's a niche. It's for a very particular type of person. And um, I think we've had to come to terms with why isn't this clicking with everyone? It's just- It's because it's so obvious to us, right? It's so obvious to us. I don't really understand how you could do it any other way, mm -hmm. but- um, it's it's something that we've just had to come to terms with, you know, and I think it's gonna take a long time to 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 kind of spread this message, but one at a time, right? That's right. That's right. And then he he might have a bunch of friends that he can spread that to, right? He mm. got it here from his friend. Mm. And then uh, that's how it's going to spread, really. It has to grow organically through word of mouth. Just from people think, oh, you should check this out, have a go at that. It helped me. These are my results. That's how I did it. There's nothing clickbaity or sexy about two guys sitting on a couch saying, play three game blocks. So it's like saying play less of the game, which is the opposite <laughs> to what everyone says. Review your games. People are like, are you serious, man? Come on, I'm playing a game yet. You know what I yep. mean? Like that is so boring, dude. Who clicks on that, dude? Yep. Dude, if I'm 14 years old, I'm probably not clicking on that. No. I don't care. All right. Next question here is a very specific one. Okay. Um, leaving base early. This is from Jared. Mm. Hey guys, when I watch high ELO streamers, I often see them leave base at less than full HP and mana. The pros get to lane two to five seconds faster, and I get to I get one to two sec one to two more CS. Sorry, they get yeah they, they get, get one to two more CS. And they get a little bit yep. more CS. Yep. The cons have um, have to reset sooner. I could see leaving early being correct when tempo is very important, but most of the time I think it's a mistake. I think people are impatient and undervalue an extra 150 HP or mana. And sometimes I see people leaving base missing much more than that. What are your thoughts? I'm only asking this uh, about laning phase. Also, how does TP affect this? Yeah, this is interesting. Um, I do this a lot, uh, kind of subconsciously. It's just, it feels right to do. A lot of the decisions I make in these situations, it just feels right to do. What I would say, um, it, it, okay, is this. There are sometimes situations or lane situations where if you get to lane first and you can come back and shove that first wave and get wards out, it completely changes the dynamic of the lane because once you get shoved in once, sometimes by particular champions, you actually can't wrestle back control once they've actually got the control because then you don't have the vision. You're too scared to shove and get your wards out. And then as a result of that, you can't contest pressure anymore. So I would say in situations where you're under a lot of threat, um, you're versing a high threat jungler or more importantly, like yeah, high threat mid jungle as well, 
or versing a, a, a champ that has a lot of wave clear, it actually is, or it feels quite good to get that lane control first. Um, it's hard to say what that's worth at a, at a HP and mana thing, but oftentimes, especially in high reload games, they're so fast paced that having to reset again doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I can go for a sneaky little reset on a counter wave. Who cares? I, I'm, I'd rather that than and then lose my control. So again, it's very situational. It's a very it's a it's a zero point zero one percenter, but. Um, I would think of it in terms of if I were you and you're really that concerned about it or you're curious about it, do the classic visualization technique where, okay, it, say to yourself, okay, if I were theoretically to get him back in lane, you know, a few seconds earlier or before my counterpart in this situation, what would that have allowed me to do? And and knowing that a situation that I am in now, given that I didn't do it, um, what would have been the best play? You got to do some visualization here and get specific. That's the only way. And it is a case by case basis. I've literally come out of base sometimes with like three quarters HP. I'll come out with three quarters HP sometimes. Because you just know you need to get that, that extra tempo. I, I've actually had even situations where I've come out with sometimes less than that because I know that I'm going to go for an, another insta reset. That's a very common one. I've done that many times where um, I'll give you a, a very specific situation. If I am playing, um, let's say I. I I know the enemy has TP advantage over me and I'm playing an Ignite mid laner. So I'm playing Ari with Ignite. And I have like this small window where I know that I can get an okay reset, but they stay longer in lane with me because then because they they catch the wave that I shoved and then she will shove another wave and then shove that one. Sometimes I'll go for a really shitty reset, come back, shove that one out and then reset again just so I can like spend max gold and match their gold. Um yeah, that's just sometimes you can you got to do what you got to do. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, it's for, for jungle. We have the I pretty much would always leave base at like eighty percent or seventy five percent HP because I have a refillable potion. Right. I love a refillable potion. Yep. so exciting and smite. And so, yeah, you don't yeah. really need to worry. Too you don't much really about need it. as a jungler. It depends sometimes, uh, and grump heals you and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. it's definitely an interesting laning thing. Mm. But yeah, definitely valuing timing, League Legends, and tempo and speed is, speed. is just a huge fundamental of the game. But people really struggle. That's like one thing I've noticed in my, in my Midland Academy. People struggle to visualize differing alternatives based off like tempo. Like they don't, tempo is, is a concept that does not click. It's mm. actually for me, one mm. of the hardest concepts. If someone comes to the Midland, Midland Academy and they've never thought about tempo, it, takes it, a, it, 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 it doesn't does. click. It, it does. doesn't click for people. Yeah. It's so and it's so interesting to me because I guess we've been, Thinking about tempo for years and years and years. We, and we years. understand the flaw of the game. Yeah, it, the, it is difficult. I think to grasp. It's, it's, it's very it's, difficult it's, to grasp. Not easy. No, and that's why I think like people they just don't get at the most fundamental level the consequences of their actions. Hmm. So like uh, you know, I, and we said this many times before, but in our mind, right when we do a review, we see someone that ha makes a bad tempo play. Whether they overstay, they miss a reset window they get that extra camp that they shouldn't have got, or in my case, they stay for that extra wave, mm. whatever it might be. Mm. We can see what could happen as a result of the consequences of this and as well as the missed opportunities that could happen. Now, there's a reality in which they don't get punished, right? They still don't die, nothing, no one dies. No one dies, nothing, they nothing don't miss, and even they, they don't even miss any opportunities yeah. sometimes. But because we've we've seen that situation play out so many times, if you run this experiment or run this thing over a hundred times, you're going to miss opportunities and you're going to get yourself caught off guard. But for someone who hasn't registered that situation or hasn't seen that situation play out many times, you kind of just have to blindly trust us that this is the correct play. And it's not until you've done that for ages where you really, you'll realize like, you know, 50 games in, okay, this actually kind of makes sense. I can kind of see where Nathan and Curtis are coming from with this. It's one of those, a lot of concepts in league, you got to experience it's exper it. That's pure, it's pure experience. experience. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the learning process is speed up if you listen to us blindly. <laughs> like if you can trust us. It's like just trust me. It's like just trust me here. <laughs> if you reset here, you could have literally got a triple kill or double kill here or like gotten yeah. the dragon or like controlled this area of the map. Yep. And I was again tying back to the last BBS episode, how we spoke about um analogies. I need an analogy for this one. I talk a lot about nowadays flexibility and versatility. I'm I'm obsessed with this concept actually in league where I, I talk about resets a lot and staying healthy so that you can adapt to something that happens. You have more options. You have more options. When you're healthy for But again, that, again, that's really hard to get across. Mm -hmm. It's like, why do you want to do this? And I'm like, oh, it's just, you, 
it's more, I'm more flexible, I'm more versatile. I can adapt if something happens. But if something doesn't happen, I look like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it could. Yeah. And the fact that it could, I want to be prepared for it. That's right. It's that's a very that's that's a huge part. That's a huge part of consistency and why mm. challenger players are challenger players. Mm. They're always prepared for those situations. It's preparation. Yeah, I've definitely had so many reviews of like, okay, now this is gonna happen. You're gonna get punished. Watch this. You're gonna get punished. And then nothing, <laughs> and then nothing was like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, nothing happens. Well, like in another situation, in another world, you would lose <laughs> the game here. And it, I can tell it just doesn't get sinking. Yeah, I say that. I actually yeah. have that all the time as well with wave management. Wave management again is something that people mm. really. Re Wave management is, by the way, just a side note here. Um, over the years I've been a mid lane coach, I'm amazed at the levels of like how deep wave management goes. Like this, it's insane. <clears throat> like it, it is one of the highest skill capabilities or like skills yeah, in the game. Yeah. I There's like videos on Chovy and stuff that they do stuff that I don't even understand actually. Fascinating. With waves. I don't get, there's so many mini things. There's, I've, I've seen that there's like a, there's like a channel on YouTube called like lol Korea or something. And, uh, and he, he like, he like reviews Chovy uh, early game sometimes. And there was like, Chovy does like these really weird things with early wave management, but on purpose it's intentional, but it's like, it's like he's able to like kind of trade but then, he, but he still guarantees that the wave will come into him. But it's also matchup dependent as well. It's, it's matchup so dependent. Advanced, it's like there, there is so it's many crazy. little miniature details that yeah. I'm still learning. I learned. I, thought, I said like two BBC episodes ago that I learned something about wave management. Yeah, um, I'm still learning. How weird is that? I'm learning stuff about it's wave so management, exciting. and I played the game for twelve oh, years. League Legends. Wave management really is. It's like it's. You talk about jungle clears. It's like the. It's a. It's like fundamental. Fundamental. Like it's like the. It's actually 101 League of Legends, actually. What I've realized, it's it's, it's League of Legends 101. Wave well, the, the game's about waves. It's all if, about if, waves. If, if there's no waves, it's just Call of Duty. It's just Call of Duty, yeah, that's right. There's nobody fighting over. You have to have waves in everything. Yeah. That's where all the, the vulnerability, much, where all the much, plays- If you actually think about it, at a, most, at a really yeah, baseline level, it's it's resources, right? It's XP and gold. It's pressure. It's vision in a weird way, right? It kind of like give vision as well. It's it's everything. It's it's basically league. Because there's only two ways to get resources, killing someone or CS. Yep. So it's half of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's half of the game. But the waves is also tied to the kills. That's right. Yeah. Waves are directly tied to kills. You can't just yeah. randomly kill someone. No. Unless again, you're playing Call of Duty League of Legends. That's correct. So yeah, the foundation is purely everything yeah. of waves. But but wave management, uh, just tying back to why it's difficult to to teach, is that I will in my mind I'm like, okay, if the enemy just does this with the wave, you're going to lose lane. But then they don't do that, and then it's hard for them to really grasp it. It's like, well, if they just held the wave here instead of just mindlessly shoving you in, they just win lane. But not many people do that. It's crazy to me. Like that that's learnt. It takes so long for people to learn that because it's just not pushed. It's just not pushed by people. Um, yeah. I mean, it's learning every day. Learning every day. Learning every day. That's what we do at the BBC podcast. <clears throat> All right. Next question here. Help with reducing the mental pain of a hard loss. <clears throat> this phone is from Connor. Hi, my name is Connor and I'm a silver mid laner. I've been playing the game since season 10, but only started playing ranked in April. How cool is it that players start the game in season 10 there? That's crazy. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. 2001, that's the year of COVID, dude. You started and he playing started playing ranked in April this year. Yeah. Wow. Imagine how fun that would be. Oh, to go back from scratch. So fun, dude. Especially if you like, especially if you start out and you're introduced by friends, you're playing with friends, and they're sort of like teaching you all this stuff about the game and stuff, and you're just like this little curious toddler, this kid. Imagine, like, imagine so if cool. you first say you played League, right? Yeah. For the first time, yeah. and you got introduced to like this podcast. How how like how advanced like how much of an advantage would you be over the long run? So you're basically saying they start with the, the like the process. They're going to get to a process mindset eventually. Well, they, they, the their relationship with the game is never really tarnished, and they're seeing the potential with the game. Like, from like because if you think about it, right? Every player has a set amount of time that they can like put into the game, mm. right? Like, so we put in the, the X amount of years from 2015, whatever onwards, and they every year they play, 
they're getting so much more value from their games comparatively to like a player. It's who, more effective. It's just more practice. effective. It's like more bang for your buck in a yeah. way. You're you're at a huge advantage. All right, so um, I found Curtis's content in season 10 when I first started playing, but at the time wasn't able to utilize it as I still didn't know what the hell half the champs in the game did. I went back and watched his mid lane fundamental series and found it very helpful now that I know the game better and have been able to pretty easily climb from bronze three to silver three playing only Anivia. At this rank, I still find that I'm not really running into many people who are outplaying me and I overall have a pretty solid win rate. My biggest problem at the moment is being able to mentally handle the games that are just unwinnable. I work 40 to 50 hours a week, and while I do have time to play three or so games a day, if I come home and my first game is a loss, especially a loss where I feel like I played fairly well, I usually just don't feel I can handle any more league for that day. This leads me to playing significantly less than I potentially could be and overall not improving as much as I could be. Is there a way to make these hard losses more bearable mentally? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's many ra- there's many ways we can tackle this problem, right? You can tackle it from an expectations. You can tackle it from a solid key contract perspective. Um, but he's in silver, Nathan. So what does that mean? Needs games. Needs games, right? You need games. So I guess first thing that comes to mind for me is um, all of your games, what's his name? Connor. Like all of your yep. games are going to be very chaotic, like in silver. The, the, everyone is, no one knows what they're doing essentially, right? So you've got 10 players in the game, yourself included, that are all very new, learning, uh, don't really have a, don't have a sophisticated understanding of the game, um, have baseline champ mastery. So every game, no matter what, is inherently chaotic because there is no planning going on. There is no strategy essentially. So... Tying back in a way at a very baseline level from the solo queue contract, that has to be your baseline understanding or your baseline expectations. Like every game I get into is going to be a bit of a shit show. It's going to be a shit show, and I, there's nothing I can do about that until even I, you know, when I play. If I play well, even if you play well, and so I think for you, you need to somewhat say to yourself, okay, so as long as I am ticking these boxes, and these boxes might be coming in with intensity. Um, really making sure that I'm playing in accordance to my champ's identity, playing off my item spikes, really focusing on my CS. Um, as long as you're ticking like basic boxes that to you, you think are quite important, then nothing else really matters. That's what you got to say to yourself. That's so really he's it. watched the mid lane fundamental series. So just focus on those things just and then basics. everything else, just keep cra- having a crack trying to get them, do them every game and that's it. Yep. As long as you're not dying to random ganks, you know, you're getting okay resets, you're getting decent CS, you're playing in a corner to your champ's identity, thumbs up. With time and with games, like you said, you got the win rate, you just got to get those those games under your belt, right? Your entire mindset right now is that it's just games, games, games. And the more games you can play with this process, the faster you're going to get out of this this rank, and then you're going to get to a high level of play, and then things will start to be a little bit different. You know, I think he's he's trying to. You can tell he's just a little bit impatient in that sense, isn't it? It's come stem from a, uh, impatience, I would say. Well, that's what we talked about last episode as well, right? Just mm-hmm. thinking about, you know, he's. I mean, he's going to be getting to to gold um, pretty soon. Um, you know, he's only been playing. He's only been playing. He's out for, of ranked in eight, wait, April. Right? Yeah, in April, April, May, June. He's been playing for like three three months. months it's ridiculous, you know? and he's he's not even that far away from gold, which is massive, massive. for a lot of people. It's huge. So yeah, you're doing the right thing, Connor. You know, yeah. like let's just yeah, try keep trying to get the more games in and and one thing I will say, even though it's hard for us to, it's, it's hard, it's sorry, it's hard for you to execute on, and it's easier for us to say. Enjoy that you're a beginner. Like I can't stress this enough. It's relax. You're gonna have a block. You haven't. You just accept that. Like everyone doesn't know what they're doing. Be curious. Have fun with it. Don't overcomplicate it. Learn to to love and, and embrace that you're a beginner. And as soon as you stop getting rid of that, get rid of the crazy expectations, you'll have a lot more fun as well. So even though they're shit fest and you might have some shitty losses, it's okay. You can still have fun on those. You can still have fun on those games. Try your best. All right. Next question here is from Matt. He's from Melbourne. Nathan has me considering changing roles for a month. 
Am I in fairyland? We love exploring fairyland mm. in the BBC universe. So let's read his question. Hey, Curtis and Nathan, love the show and the new Reddit Reacts videos. It's sick having BBC content all throughout the week. Keeps me in check. On to my question. I was wondering if I should pursue another role for a month or so, specifically jungle. Currently, I'm a gold three top laner and a reformed Reddit analyst. So take everything I say with a grain of salt as I'm very analytical. Um, as a reformed Reddit analyst, I often have a tendency to exaggerate my knowledge of the game through regurgitating smart things I hear or at least overgeneralized statements that sound smart or stats such as win rates. I feel I've gotten better at this over time, especially listening to the podcast and being curious about each game. This has led me down the path of realizing how little I know about other roles. Isn't it a reformed... Um, Reddit, Reformed Reddit analyst. It's like a, it's like, it's like a, a woke Reddit analyst. You know what I mean? Isn't right. That, it's crazy to me that because I feel I always feel like that those people can't be changed. You know what I mean? No, they definitely no. You definitely can't. You just got to get perspective. I think, I think you know, like you said, he's recognized that he's analytical, maybe overly analytical, and he's in a game where you need to be very or develop your intuition. Um, yeah, I think it definitely can be changed. Yeah, maybe I'll just have a very pessimistic view. Yeah, I think you, do, you have a very <laughs> pessimistic view. These guys, the Reddit Reacts videos are beating me down. Yeah. They're nah, beating it, me it down. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, yeah, so I think that's awesome to hear, you mm. know. Um, especially how he was a self... He's so honest about it as well. I was like, this was me back. This is exactly what I did. And now this is what I'm doing now. Okay. All right, so listening to the podcast, I've heard Nathan talk about Jungle and it sounds amazing. I could 100% be in Fairyland, but he has opened my mind to a role I disregarded pursuing. I got really into chess in 2020, reaching 1600 rating, which I believe is around top 5% on chess.com. Hearing Nathan talk about jungle has drawn so many connections to my chess knowledge, like pattern recognition, chess openings, early clear, end a review after a game altering mistake. Again, I could be in complete fairyland and that as well would be good feedback. However, it got me thinking that this role would really suit my personality and I should try out jungle if for nothing else, then learn my what my jungle wants to do when I play lane. But also it sounds like something I could pursue as a main secondary role if I enjoy it. If I go down this path of playing jungle, I really want to take it seriously as I don't have a lot of time to play league outside of full-time work in the gym, a three block on weekdays and two on weekends. Um, my North star as Curtis Corder is to be a diamond level player. Should I reach a higher rank like plat before this little jungle adventure? Am I simply wasting my time by not refining my top lane skills? Is a month such a small amount of time it wouldn't make a difference? Would love to hear your take on this. Well, when it comes to selecting a role, man, it's all about what you enjoy, what you love. Mm. And, um, oh, okay. So, so the part of me is like, he's put a lot of effort into the top lane already. Yeah. Look, there's no doubt in my mind that if you join Nathan's program and given your background as being like more of like an analytical type player and person, jungle would be very suited to you and you would get results and you could get diamond. It would take time, but you could get diamond, right? There's no doubt about that. It's just whether or not that's what gives you the most enjoyment. So I think for you, for him for him to make this decision, it would really come down to what gives him the most enjoyment and satisfaction, right? If he genuinely loves top lane and he loves the champs, like he loves the Fuhrer, the Camille or the Yorick or the Elet, whatever it is he plays, no amount of another role will give you that same satisfaction, even if you get a higher rank, because you're always going to be thinking, oh, I wish I got like to diamond with Fiora or yeah. Camille. Like you just- the, the champion aspect is important as well, because really sometimes people might be like the analytical side and stuff, but the jungle champions that just don't really, you know, again, they're sort of like the Darius players, the Fiora players. It just yeah. suits them. It suits more. them. I've actually had people in the MLA who they, they love mid, but they don't like the champs mm. to the point where they try to force- niche mid picks when they'd be better off to actually just playing another role. Like they would actually probably have more satisfaction in another role. And they, they didn't believe in them in that academy. They say, oh, look, I just realized it wasn't for me. Um, I'm trying to play all this random stuff mid. I should just be a jungler or I should just be an AD carry, you know? So I think first things first, how attached you are, how attached you are, are you to the champs that you currently play? How attached to the champs um, you currently play? Um, 
or is it more you just like the the like the analytical part of the game? You're not really attached to champs. You just like the game itself, or um, or do you not? Yeah, just don't care about champs. You're just more about getting better no matter what. In the, if that's the case, then yes, I think Nathan Joyce going to jungle would would be great, and you would have a lot of fun, and you would like it. Um, but again, like I said, you don't want to waste your own time. You don't want to get there and realize, okay, I love Darius and I only want to play Darius. Don't try to make Darius jungle work. It better just to stay in top lane, right? Yeah. So uh, I guess we didn't really give him a, a, a he's got to ask some questions, some follow-up yeah. questions. Well, a lot, of, a lot of the time, Nathan, we can't answer these questions for these people. What we got to do is ask them high quality questions so yeah. that they can come to the solution by themselves. That's right. You know, that's what I always say. Role is always determined what gives you the most satisfaction. What I would say as well, like there's no, like I don't even recommend dabbling. Like you, you can't. Yeah, dabbling. Dabbling never works because you try something for like two weeks and then you like realize how hard it is. No matter, you just, it's just, you're not going to get if, a if, true if picture months, of it. Yeah, that's right. Cause you're not going to put in the time to see the potential, the level you can get to or the actual, yeah. Cause the thing is about this, Matt, you'll go to jungle. You actually, when you start playing it, you probably won't even all the analytical stuff in the path. And you won't stuff, even be able to use it's it. It's never going to be relevant. It yeah. won't be relevant. Because yeah. we're just going to learn how to hit our camps and do our clears and yeah. just really boring stuff to begin with. Yeah. So it would have to be like more, yeah, the mindset, again, he said he wants to play change roles for a month. Doesn't work. It would have to be, I think jungle could be a way better suited role for me. I'm going to go for it. And um, if I really enjoy it, then I'm going to go all in. That's going to be the different mindset shift. Right. Compa compared to, to I play top I don't know lane, I, and I I'm just want to sure. see what jungle is like dabble it. you can't it's like you got to have the intention that you're going to commit right that's yeah. ideally the goal yeah or the reasoning yeah yeah I agree I've I, I don't I, I've actually haven't come across someone that has effectively dabbled in a role and stuck to that role yeah they always go back <laughs> to their role it's true. In my experience. They yeah. join them in the cami, say, oh, you know, I play mid lane. I want to, want it to be my main role, but I originally come from top. They go back to top more yeah. often not, whether it's a month later or whatever. Two break, later. Once it gets harder, it'll break you down. You go back to what yep. you know, what you're comfortable with. Yeah, or you'll see that champion being played in a game and you're like, fuck, I wish that was me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know? You'll see that top lane of your game like, God, I could have carried this game. Yeah. So it, that yep. would happen Or you verse that champion that's fed in yeah. one, one game and that will drive you insane. It is. That's the thing about it. All right. Um, here ends the email saying, keep up the great work. Um, I've also sent a few clips of the podcast to my mum and she loves it. Just to go show these concepts go beyond solo queue. <laughs> Get the mums on board. Shout out BBC mums. That's right. We do have a few. <laughs> We've had a few written in, right in, remember? Yeah. We actually have a community of them. It's great. All right. Um, that's it for Mailbag today. Good work, everyone. Let's keep on improving, breaking down narratives, sending questions. We'll see you next time.